Welcome back. Remember our socials at KBC Channel One. My Twitter handle at Tomboya24. I'd already introduced them. Mola to my immediate left. Swaka yes. in the middle and Daktari. Mm. Um, President elect William Samoy Ruto, the Supreme Court uh, upheld, um, and we are seeing the youngest ever mm. president of the Republic of Kenya. I want to get your reactions. And let me start with you, Akili. Yeah, first of all, of course, it's congratulations to Dr. Ruto uh, because, uh, uh, truth be told, he has worked really hard to be where he is. Uh, and so some of the things he, he has actually said today is uh, given his background, as he said, it gives hope to every Kenyan uh, wherever you come from. So I think mm. a, it is a, a good thing for um, looking at it from, from that perspective for every Kenyan uh, from whichever background you come from that your dreams, as Obama said, are valid no, no matter what, where you come from. Um, the Supreme Court has already delivered the decision and that decision is final. Um, the way the drafters of the Constitution made it is that a dispute <coughs> resulting from uh, the presidential election is subjected to the Supreme, is presented to the Supreme Court. And once the Supreme Court, which is the apex court, has made, made uh, its decision, that decision is final. So all that is remaining is for people to accept. Uh, you might not agree with it, as uh, I have seen, as me, your leader has said, and the advocates have said, but at least you have to accept that this is the decision of the court. And, and it's very important because we have to build uh, confidence in our court, because if we disregard the court orders, then it's a recipe for anarchy. So it's important that the decision the court <coughs> makes uh, are respected. Uh, we, we are going to read in 21 days the, the, the reason decision, as they have said. We are going to see some of the, because whatever they were, they were giving was bas basically a summary, a summary of the decision. Yeah. 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 yeah, and we'll wait for those 21 days. Um, interesting, you say that uh, the president-elect in his victory speech made some comments. That's right. And, uh, you know, we'll get into those details. But Swaka. What was your reaction when, you know, CJ Martha Kombe said, you know, we are withholding this, we are upholding this victory? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, thank you, Boya. Uh, the thing is, um, we, this is the third petition we are having in our courts, Supreme Court, from the time the new constitution of 2010 came into effect. We've actually been very active lit litigants at, uh, at the Supreme Court when it comes to presidential elections. In 2013, it was a unanimous decision. 2017 was a split decision, and now again, we've gone, we've gone back to the unanimous decision. Uh, when you look at uh, the decision that uh, was basically rendered today, you realize that uh, unlike in previous dispositions, uh, judges have been able to outline their lines of reasoning, the substance and, uh, which guided them to reach where, 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 where they reach in terms of their reasoning and, 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 their, and their decision. But this time round, um, they all encompassed into one document, which then Martha, Karu, uh, rather uh, Martha Kome, the CJ, was able to to call a synopsis of the of the judgment and a detail what will come, of course, after 21 days. Mm -hmm. And then um, two or three things that varied from the other uh, uh, decisions, being that uh, this decision was cumulative in in in, in the sense that uh, the CJ read it on behalf of everyone else. So we couldn't get the points of termination. And again, it was a very unanimous decision as they well laid it. And it is a decision that went through all the nine issues that the court had framed and actually did not, or rather dismissed every of the, of the issue. It did, not, it did not uphold any of the issues. And in their dismissal of the issues, they said dismissal was unanimous. So it's... It's a record breaker in our country because, uh, one, we've never had as many issues as the ones that were framed. Mm. Two, we've never had a, a, from a Zemio quarter such a serious petition with many prayers. It was just not uh, uh, overturned the, 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 the results. It was 
it had other prayers touching on the IBC touching on the conduct of the chair touching on um, on uh, maybe the recomposition of the IBC it had lots and lots of prayers some were even criminal in nature do you think so some were criminal in nature and uh, of course some were out of the path of the jurisdiction of the court and okay. you had the court actually say uh, we are we are unable to do or to deal with some of the issues that you framed you know the jurisdiction lies uh, elsewhere and so as they rendered the decision today uh, it was a shocker because it was a shocker, uh, was a shocker because uh, yeah. uh, we expected perhaps that one or two of the issues that have been raised would be maybe uh, uh, embraced by the court, but for them to go through all the issues and nullify them. All of them. On a unanimous yeah. position. Yeah. I think that was a record breaker. In our country. Terry, hmm. Yes. Swaka says it was a record breaker. He expected mm. at least one. <laughs> 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 or two or three. Uh -huh. all right? But he says all of them mm. collapsed on their own weight. Now, what was your reaction first once that uh, victory was upheld? First, strangely, I was not surprised. Yes, I, I, saw, Why? I saw this coming. Yeah. Uh, first election should not be won in the corridors of justice, in my view. Elections should be won machinani. Uh, in the corridor of justice, we just go seek, you know, some kind of uh, relief. Uh, relief. Uh, uh, relief <coughs> in the event yeah. that we feel injured mm. in the process. So placing so much reliance on the Supreme Court to sort out this mess was expecting a little bit too much. Mm. That's in my view. Okay. You asked me why I felt this way earlier. Uh, I took time to just see how the both legal sides are constituted, and I say this without prejudice. Um, at first, I didn't know, and I don't know if it is prudent to mention names here. I didn't know that uh, that uh, that Ngatia would be would be, be appearing yeah. for, for Kenya Kwanza. senior counsel. Yeah, senior counsel. Yeah, senior counsel. And when he did, mm. I said this was a game changer because I've taken time to try and understand to study the man, mm -hmm. and I understand his level of detail. Yeah, he's very very thorough. Mm. and he's very good at articulating the issues that he sees in front of him mm -hmm. and i thought to that after to that level yeah as a new we're going to have an uphill task yeah so when the supreme court comes and says we are upholding the election results mm -hmm. i reiterate again that i'm not surprised but again this again is all odds mm -hmm. so like my friend here has mentioned <coughs> I'm, I'm laying the matter's law so this is just uh, you know it's, it's just my opinion yeah um but I want to mention here that against all odds, mm -hmm. uh, President-elect uh, William, Dr. William Ruto has, has really outdone himself. Mm -hmm. and, and we must commend him for that. Mm -hmm. We must truly commend him for that. Mm -hmm. um, it's unprecedented, mm -hmm. in my view, mm -hmm. and it is phenomenal mm -hmm. in, in the lessons that we can learn from this particular process and okay. how he has gone about it. Okay. When we feel so defeated as a country, because <coughs> maybe the legislature is not really playing to the expectations of Monainchi, the executive is not playing to the level that we expect as a Monainchi, mm. you end up taking a lot of pride as a Kenyan yeah. when you see how the Supreme Court and the courts of Kenya execute their responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Today I was very proud <coughs> just listening to Justice, Chief Justice Martha Comey make those pronouncements mm -hmm. and he told me that indeed mm. we are a law governed country. So those are my initial remarks. Those are your initial remarks. Let me ask you, Wakili, before Swaka <coughs> comes in, huh? Oh, so can maybe you want to say something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you for for Doc. I, I, of course, I'll just say that uh, uh, when this matter has come to the floor of the Supreme Court, mm. it's not even the issue of representation. When you hear what the CJ was alluding to was evidence. Mm. It's evidence that changes everything, correct? Mm. Not because boys are there or Swaka or... Mm. And uh, according to the court, mm. There was a lot of talk. Mm. There was a lot of sensationalism. Yeah. But show us the evidence. Mm -hmm. Let your words be accompanied mm -hmm. by substance. Yeah. And so the court said, as far as they were concerned, mm -hmm. there were very hot submissions done, mm -hmm. but they were not accompanied by evidence. substantive ev evidence, yeah. which would cause the court to overturn the judgment, uh, an election. Mm -hmm. Then the court of course mentioned that of course there are disparities here and there mm -hmm. there were some scintillia of evidence mm -hmm. but it's not sufficient mm -hmm. to overhaul a whole a whole election mm -hmm. and so 
that was a game changer. That was a game changer. Yeah. Let me just ask Wakili this. Eh? And I would like us to do a comparative analysis between uh, the 2017 petition and the 2022 petition, just in passing. Mm -hmm. Are there any parallels? Are there any differences that you can see between these two? <coughs> Definitely there are, there, are, there are differences. And the obvious difference is that this decision today was unanimous. Uh, the 2017 one wasn't. Like the 2013 one? Yeah, like the 2013 so, one. Yes, and and yeah. uh, as Council rightly, rightly put it. Yeah. Uh, but what we, have, we saw, um, and the major difference in this petition, mm -hmm. and I think that's the reason why we had a unanimous decision, mm -hmm. is that when you look at the 2017 decision, mm -hmm. um, in fact, code as it were at that time, it actually had evidence. And that evidence... NASA. And NASA, NASA, that it was yeah. NASA, in yeah, NASA, NASA, right? NASA, yeah. Yes, they had evidence. Mm -hmm. and, and that evidence was really credible. And they presented it to court. The court looked at it. And in fact, they were saying, what we have... If you are to compare it with what is in the server, mm -hmm. you will find a lot of difference, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of disparity. Mm -hmm. And they asked um, IBC at that time to open the server. Yeah. IBC didn't. Mm -hmm. So there was only one conclusion the court can make, mm -hmm. that if this evidence has been presented to us mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. they want to compare what, whatever they're having or whatever I hard copy the IBC are having, mm -hmm with what is on the server and you are not opening the server there's only one conclusion mm -hmm. there is something you're hiding yeah. okay. and i think that was a game changer that time this oh. time round mm. uh mr chebukati and his team mm -hmm. opened the server okay initially or at least that is what was was seen that all the forms are put there and uh, the public and the parties uh, concerned could could be able to to access them and when the parties went to court one of the things i think uh, azimio failed mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. was to present some of the evidence that was questionable yeah. in fact the court uh, I, I think got mad mm. by the they way say, before, before you bring that point mm -hmm. let me just ask you do you think council philip Murgo? or senior counsel, James Orengo, would agree with you when you said that the servers were open? If they won't, I will, I'm, I'm coming to that point. <coughs> I'm coming to, okay. to that All point. Right. Okay. Uh, one of the things is uh, that actually questionable. So, for instance, there were some evidence that were, was being presented, and even John Githongo did acknowledge that, in fact, I was misled. Some of these things are from 2017. Mm -hmm. So once you put that before the court, in fact, uh, the way the court already loses, uh, I mean, interest in whatever you're saying. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, when you look at the registrar's report, and which was the most important report, yeah. uh, and most of us, that is the report we are looking at. The registrar's report say that IBC, in fact, did comply with most things. And where they did not comply, for instance, there were some other, I think they wanted, to, um, applicants wanted to see. Yeah. They didn't see. But the IBC said, we have presented these things to court because of some of the <coughs> NDAs that were in there. We cannot give it to you, but we have given it to court. So ultimately what happened, uh, the court, I think it was who can be believed. Who, who was more believable. And, and the IBC managed to convince the court that in fact, we have complied. And the report of the registrar did in fact that to a, a greater extent, IBC complied. Mm -hmm. and, and when you look at uh, what uh, uh, Senior Counsel Murgo did, mm -hmm. he presented some document. In fact, they wanted to sneak in some document contrary, <laughs> to, the, contrary to, the, to, the, to the rules of the court. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, which, which, that, which, that which, one, which, 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 Someone like, uh, I mean, uh, Ngatia, yeah. he is sent it to detail. And yeah. they actually saw that some documents mm -hmm. were being introduced out of time because that court has very strict timelines mm -hmm. on what can be produced and at what time. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to produce some document that was not in the registrar's report mm -hmm. indicating that uh, there was some access to the server mm -hmm. way after, uh, mm -hmm. before the election and after the election, and, and which was not in the registrar's report. Mm -hmm. And that thing was thrown out. And once that was thrown out, they didn't have anything. Uh, Azimio didn't have anything didn't to have say. Anything. Yeah, they didn't. Okay. And, yeah. and you know, the judges also ruled, uh, Wakili Swaka, that a number of irregularities were noted. But as you said, they were not, you know, mm -hmm. the two warrants, the, you know, annulment of, of, of an election. 
But the, pre the outgoing president also said something. He posed a question. Um, can an institution rule one way in an election petition uh, with almost similar facts <coughs> and then proceed to rule another way in an election petition? How, how do, we, how do the, the, the wananchi, the voter, you know, reconcile this? Yeah, and that's the... Uh, that's 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 why you had me say uh, uh, this decision was also was equally a shocker because uh, when you look at 2013 when Code filed a petition, yeah, it was dismissed unanimously. In 2017, the court recollected itself, and of course, a part of the judges dissented, part of the judges agreed. Yeah. And so they voted, and of course, the majority, the majority's view was taken. The difference between 2017 and now is this. As I rightly put it, as, Mola, as, my, as my landed friend Mola rightly put it, they opened the servers in 2017. Yeah. Or rather, they failed to open the servers in 2017. 17, yeah. Some were saying they're in France, people are asleep and all that. In 2022, again, the issue of the server arose. Now, this is where the contention is. The petitioners allege, or rather say that, servers were never fully opened. They, were never, they, they, they never fully complied with the orders of the court. Mm. But on the, on the other hand, IBC is saying, no, we opened the servers yeah. to, to the best of our ability. That means they opened one, according to what uh, the petitioner was saying, they opened one server, yeah. yet there's supposed to be, I think, five or seven. Yeah. So the rest were never basically interrogated or looked at. Then the court moves without hearing um, uh, parties, that means uh, the petitioners and the respondents, proceeds to rely on a report by the deputy registrar of the court, or rather the registrar of the court. Mm -hmm. And now uh, the petitioners critique that report and say that that report was misleading to the court. They had their own position in regard to the service. And now there is no other way they'll have been able to express themselves to the court but by giving out their report. But at the point of giving out their report, their report is rejected. Remember in 2013, mm -hmm. Raila Odinga's, uh, part of Raila Odinga's documents were expunged because of those timelines. Yeah. And yet, according to the, uh, to the court petition, the document that were expunged or not accepted by the court yeah. are the document that contained a great detail of evidence. And from there, it's been, when you look at 2017, the courts allowed all documents to be filed even out of town for purposes of getting into the substance of the matter. So anyone who came, the court said, okay, we're not going to strike this, we're not going to strike this because there are a lot of applications of striking out pleadings. But the court said, no, let us just entertain and hear everyone, we'll make our decision. We'll make our decision. So the court looked at the entire substance. This time round, of course, uh, there was that issue of documents that came late, the ones that can uh, be admitted and, and, all that, and all that. The court still proceeded to allow most of the documents. Remember, the decision or the direction of the court to have the a, a, a service opened and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the registrar make an independent report was arrived at during the course of, uh, of the petition. Mm -hmm. And so there is no way any party, yeah. both the respondents or the petitioners, Petition. will have introduced that document within time. Yeah. Because then you're supposed to file all your pleadings exactly. before the commencement of the pretrial conference. Yeah. And so... Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, just, just, just conclude that yeah. point. And so, mm. and so according to the petitioners, mm. if the court was candid enough or, or kind enough yeah. to... Extend uh, some latitude. To, yes, and, and allow them to basically interrogate all the servers and give their own independent report yeah. with the court then, which would be persuasive to the court, yeah. then the, the feeling that the court will have arrived at a very different um, uh, position uh -huh. than, than the one they, they're able to arrive at today. Yeah, although I had uh, Mola, senior counsel James Orengo cite the Rogan word matter, and I'm wondering what was the relevance of that case? I know it's a matter that has taken so long in the United States. Yes. 
but finally they were, what happened just just give us a I, brief, I, I, brief background I, I, and then I, I think uh, uh, and why senior counsel Lorengo mentioned I, it I think the reason he he was uh, mentioning it because that particular case in the US had, had taken I think over 50 years uh, without being overturned and and the reason why senior counsel has been uh, saying because for him is that the struggle is still on if you could listen to senior counsel, and I think that, that is the, um, the feeling for uh, Azimio as well right now. Mm -hmm. and, and so what, what happened? Um, uh, you want the, the, the facts forward? No, I mean, he's, he mentioned it in passing, and he said yes. he, he cited that matter. Yes. And, and, and I got a feeling that a lot of people didn't understand where he was no, no, he, from. Basically, what you were saying, that all along uh, the, the, co the courts... And that was his feeling also, his, and he's allowed to have that feeling mm -hmm. that the, co the court was having it wrong. And uh, finally, I think with also the changing of time, mm -hmm. the court got it wrong. I mean, got it right this time round, mm -hmm. uh, many years later. Mm -hmm. And what you, I think uh, when you juxtapose it with the decision that the court gave today, yeah. he, he felt that today the court got it very wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason, as uh, counsel has rightly put it, <coughs> is that some of the things that uh, or the court ought to have looked at, mm -hmm. they didn't. For instance, mm -hmm. they were insisting, uh, as the Mio team was insisting, that um, they had, in fact, evidence mm -hmm. that the servers were uh, breached. Uh, were breached. Yeah. And, and some, some of that evidence, and which was quite important for them, mm -hmm. was actually not included. Okay. okay. Like, uh, as, as, as counsel has yeah, rightly yeah, put it. Yeah, put it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. And so, I, I okay. think the reason why he, senior counsel was quoting it, because for him, he feels that this time they got it wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, they ought to have looked at some issue that they didn't look at. Okay. But I, as I've already said, okay. I think that court mm -hmm. uh, operates under very strict timelines and very strict rules. Yeah. And when you look at how that court has operated, even when you look at Trilodinga 2013, yeah. they expanded a 900-page nine, document yeah. because of uh, f f uh, timelines and procedure. Every and this time round, in mm -hmm. fact, I was I was shocked mm -hmm. that uh, the court did allow so many affidavits and other things mm -hmm. out of time. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, perhaps counsel is going to agree with me. Yeah. It was actually because the filing of those documents, at the time of filing, mm -hmm. the court's e-filing system had failed. And so the court looked at it and felt if we don't allow mm -hmm. these documents for mm -hmm. failure of the court, mm -hmm. then I think it will be prejudicial to all parties. So it allowed all the documents. Yeah. But then when, and finally after allowing all these documents, mm -hmm. it said pleadings have closed, yeah. if you follow the proceedings. Yeah. So the document that um, Senior Counsel Mugo wanted to introduce, mm -hmm. It Came was actually outside. it was coming way that after outside okay. after after the uh, after after the pleadings have closed, and you, I think it will have been very difficult yeah, you for, made your point, for the yeah. court to. Yeah, yeah you made your point. I want I want to go to before I go to Dr. Rowan to 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 tell us um, because you see the president elect said two things. He promised to place a call to the outgoing president, and he also promised to place a call to right honourable Ray Laudinga. Worthy competitor. He's yeah, he's worthy competitor, and yeah. in my mind because he has already poured cold water over the doctrine of handshake. In my mind, I'm just wondering how that conversation would go. Before I come to you, no let, me, let me just ask. We have seen Ghanaian's impressive record of holding peaceful elections, and they're attributing it to a number of factors. But top on that list is, is what they are calling the Inter-Party Dialogue Committee. That committee has got representatives from the clergy, that committee has got representation from the various political parties. That committee has got uh, members of the civil society. That same committee also has the security the apparatus That's right. of the nation. So their role is basically to ensure that before, during and after elections, peace prevails. That's and right. they have done it successfully. That's right. And I'm thinking, what are the lessons we can pick from this Ghana experience? Because the matrix of measuring the outcome is peace. That's right. We have had a lot of Kenyans, you know, talking about peace. Peace has become currency. But the Ghanaians have put it in such a frame that everybody who loses that election has accepted great faith in it. That's right. What, 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 what can we pick from that, that, that model? I, I think that is something that Kenyans should think about because what we are having in this country at the moment, uh, to me, if you are to ask me, is superficial peace. Because... Uh, like superficial um, what? Superficial peace. Basically, is peace built on uh, on sand, sand. On sand. To me, and and this is my, my my reason, because we want to preach peace after an election, 
after events. When you look at the system the Ghanaians have built, mm -hmm. is that they have to, they start building uh, uh, consensus uh, and, and avenues for peace way before, before uh, elections are held, during the election and even after the election. They bring all stakeholders, they look at what is likely to happen. For instance, if there is, uh, when you look at um, uh, that particular uh, formation, what are things that are likely to uh, bring some disharmony. For instance, mm -hmm. is there, before the election, mm -hmm. is everyone being given enough airtime? Mm -hmm. Is, uh, are there... And we saw the president-elect raise that. That's right, he, he said today. The coverage He's, was imbalanced. That's right, he yeah. said it today. Yeah. Uh, are, are we seeing people being bribed? Yeah. That, that, that particular uh, committee looks at such, such things. Mm. Uh, 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 people being given an opportunity to express themselves, for instance, civil education and things like that. Mm -hmm. Now, where people have, because it, it comprises all these people, where these people have come together and are addressing <coughs> issues that ought to have been addressed, mm -hmm. uh, like in Kenya we normally address them after the election, because that's why we normally go to the court, then it is easy for people to actually accept the result. Mm -hmm. And remember that there is a saying that goes that uh, there is no actually peace without justice. Yeah. Justice precedes peace. Mm -hmm. So if there are many people in this country yeah. feeling that they have been robbed of uh, a, a victory, uh, as, as many people are feeling today, I was, I was somewhere, and some people are saying, I'll never vote, mm -hmm. okay? There is a sense of dejection. Then it is, it is a bad thing because people feel that they didn't get a just outcome. And so perhaps this is something this country is going to think about in okay. future, mm -hmm. that we have to build systems mm -hmm. where uh, uh, every, every, all stakeholders can be included, uh, the, the civil society, the youth, um, uh, religious leaders, and all these people, mm -hmm. uh, political actors, everyone, mm -hmm. so that at the end of the election, yeah. we know that when we went to the election, all structures are put in place. Because what we are handling right now is actually saying that there are no proper structures. Okay. For, yeah. All right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Ari, that question I'd asked you, how, how do you think that conversation can go, number one? And number two, because you know, uh, the president-elect has said, you know what, the handshake days are over, right? And he has sort of given a sense that he wants the opposition to take its space yeah. so that, you know, there are checks and balances. You know, they want to be checked. That, that's the message that's Correct. coming out. So he, he says he's going to place a call both to Right Honorable and uh, outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta. Uh, your conversation expert. I just, <laughs> how, want, I just how, want to pick your mind. How do you think that will go? That's, yeah, that's how do you think that will go? Before I go to that, I'll just quickly want to react okay, to the, okay. the Ghana question, Please. which I thought was yeah. also very, very powerful. Yeah. And you've asked, how can we learn from the experience? Exactly, yes, yes. Uh, Proceed. My, my thinking is, mm. uh, it takes a lot of discipline and humility to do what the Ghanaians are doing. For me, it's as basic as that. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at our politics, mm. it's very toxic. Mm. Our politics is very toxic, and it's full of bravado. Mm -hmm. Now, from that position alone, to build a position of trust where you can be assured of a sustained continuity of peace mm. and cohesion, then that becomes a big, big challenge. Mm. So we are different in that sense. Mm. I've had the privilege of socializing with Ghanaians, so okay. I can attest to that. Another question that you also asked that I thought was very powerful was the outgoing president's remarks about what has happened in Supreme Court today. Exactly. And the fundamental question is how then do you have the same data mm -hmm in two different occasions yeah. and still arrive at a different determination. Uh, that's curious if anybody was to ask you that. Uh, but I mu you must recognize that he is the CEO of the country. You must recognize that he is the commander in chief of the country. Yeah. Is there information that he has that is not in the public domain that makes him make those remarks? Because those are very powerful and weighty and, weighty and damaging comments in my view. But if I was to wear my academic hat to respond to the same question, and then with the humility and tremendous respect, I would say it is not uncommon to have the same scenario and arrive at totally two different determinations on a matter. Because it depends on what variables were at play then and the variables that are at play now. And I think both Achilles have done a very good job of trying to explain how that looks like. With regards to your question, mm -hmm how the conversation will go. It's likely to be. Yeah, I'm seeing a president who is already occupying his space as the new commander-in-chief. 
and he is dictating the proceedings and how he expects those to go, as would be expected of anybody else who is taking office. Granted, there's a bit of a frosty relationship here, uh, so somebody wants to, to be seen to be actually you know, taking charge of what needs to happen, and that is not unusual. I have no problem with that. To the question of the call, it will be a difficult conversation because I believe one section of, of, of the pair is still in a, in a space of, of pain. That's what I think. <coughs> Things did not go the way it was expected. So I, I would hope and urge that the incoming president does this from a place of humility, where, you know, with magnanimity, you, 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 you take the accolades that come with your success, you recognize or you become sensitive to the pains that the other people may be suffering as you try to shepherd the country going forward. Okay. On the issue of the handshake, which he has said very clearly that that is not something he will advocate for, uh, I see him standing by that. And sincerely, if you ask me, there'll be no big reason why we should have this handshake politics. Yeah. Because in my mind, handshake politics destroys another fabric of our democracy. Yeah. And that fabric of our democracy is to oppose the check fabric. and to oversight. Yeah. The minute yeah. we shake hands and they say we can work together, <coughs> then there's a very blurred line. That collapses. Yeah, that collapses. Okay, I get you. And so when he says he wants to be checked, yeah. I admire that very much. Yeah. But I take it with a bit of a pinch of salt mm -hmm. because we have seen people mm. elected yeah. you know, in droves moving to the other side. Mm -hmm. Now, for me, that is not very promising. Okay. It tells me that something is wrong. If you are elected in opposition ticket, mm -hmm. stay true to the fidelity of the law and the people who elected you in that ticket. Yeah. And if you have been defeated, yeah occupy your space okay. as an opposition representative of okay. parliament. Okay, and I'll be coming to Swaka to tell me what the Katiba says about, you know, the movements that we have seen. Lately. It is immoral. But before we, we, we do that, let me just do a follow-up question. Yeah. Because you spoke about magnanimity. Yeah. And I did hear the president-elect, you know, congratulate all the candidates who are in this presidential race of yeah. 2022. Yeah. And he actually even singled out the right honorable and, you know, wished him. And, and if I may just read, because these were the public yeah. words. Yeah. May the spirit of love for selfless service lie in your heart. Yeah. And immediately thereafter, he pledged to build a Kenya uh, for all, including those people who did not vote to him. So before I come to Swaka, mm -hmm. what do you think can stop him from accomplishing that goal? Nothing can stop him from accomplishing that goal. The only thing you want to hope you're hearing is not another rhetoric. Because I'll be very quick to tell you, that's a common template for anybody who has won a presidential election or an elective vote. That is a normal template. For me, the test of the pudding is in the eating. The first 100 days will tell me whether the president-elect will live true to the spirit of his words today and which I honestly, with all humility, trust that he will. Nothing stops him. The opposition politics as we know it is a healthy thing for us to have. So if you want to be oversighted, don't destroy it. Don't destroy it. And I say that with passion. Don't destroy it. Allow it to thrive. Allow it to grow. Find a way of conducting your business in the house without destroying that one fabric okay. that has really helped us build our democracy. Okay. So nothing stops him from achieving that goal. Mm -hmm. But it is a different process. We are, we are vacating the political aspect of things. We are getting into governance and management. And that's a different ballgame. Swaka, there's an argument counter to what Dr. Daria said that, hey, he's the president elect, he has an agenda. There are promises that he made to Kenyans. And what he's basically doing is ensuring that he gives his agenda wings yeah. so that his agenda can fly. And how does he do that? Reaching out to all Kenyans, including even those who are on the other side. But I'm not sure what Katiba says about that. Uh, <clears throat> now we are in a very different dispensation where we're dealing with coalitions. And uh, all coalitions all members of uh, uh, party members to a coalition are basically registered unlike before and there is a uh, and that uh, registration is deposited with the register with the of registrar of parties, parties, yeah, parties. Yeah. so there are timelines there is substance there is content there is behavior all captured before that like we used just to have amorphous organizations or interactions mm -hmm. but right now everything is anchored in law 
it 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 uh, the agreements fell when you joined how each party can exit and when they can exit those kind of uh, framework and you realize that uh, just by being declared president elect uh, the president elect actually embraced people who crossed over parties who crossed over from the other coalition to his coalition if truly you're saying no handshake i want a strong opposition don't weaken the opposition because by doing that basically what you're doing is to weaken the opposition <coughs> that will be because then what what follows is that uh, you'll be getting numbers to your side to the extent that the opposition gets weakened in terms of numbers and then it's easily beatable when it comes to uh, voting and debates and whatever in parliament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if, per adventure, the president-elect says, I want to see, I, I'm committed to seeing um, a very strong opposition. Mm -hmm. I want to see this democratic space of Kenyans uh, right. increasing yeah. Yeah. and rising up. I want to be checked, I want this government to be checked seriously. Then let the opposition be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you cannot have both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't have parties join you and numbers join you, then you say, I'm ruling out a handshake, a handshake you can the main pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, that's marks of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of pretense. Yeah, okay. Again, mm -hmm. the issue of handshake has never been to destroy opposition. The issue of handshake has been to bring a country, and more particularly, a very fragmented country like ours together. Reason being, when I look at my, 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 my maths here, mm -hmm. 22 million people registered as voters. Let's say Kenyans were 40 million, but 22 million people registered as voters. Yeah. The ones who didn't come out to vote were about uh, 7 million. The ones who voted were 14 million. And this 14 million, the difference between the winner of the presidential race and the, and, and the person who followed is only 200,000. So we're having a country that is totally split. In the, mid in the middle. Yes. When you look at those who voted for Raila, maybe 7 million, mm -hmm. because the difference was, one, was some, some few hundreds to, to, to make 7 million, plus the 15 million who, uh, 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 who did not turn up, uh, let me say my maths, plus the 8 million who did not turn up to vote. Mm -hmm. 8 plus 7, talk of 15 million Kenyans. Look at uh, the ones who appear to support the, uh, the president-elect, another 7 million. Kenya is fragmented, as you say, in some quarter, just rejoicing. In some quarter, there are tears. Yeah. So the issue of having a strong opposition cannot be beyond the issue of bringing and causing the country to be one society. It's more important that everybody feels a part of this dispensation, a part of this government. Every Kenyan feels a part of what is happening today, as opposed to being relegated to the position of critiquing the government. Because we're critiquing the government as an opposition, it just heightens these uh, political temperatures. We know where this country has come from. For example, there was a handshake between Raila and Moi. There was a handshake between Raila and Kibaki. And we saw what, what happened. The country came down and there was a lot of peace. We saw the other day, after the nullification of the presidential election 2017, the handshake just brought fevers down, temperatures down, and Kenya was able to, to move forward. Maybe perhaps we could be discussing or saying, how is it possible then, within the handshake, also to create proper uh, uh, proper structures for, yeah. for the opposition. <laughs> so as then, in the, in the midst of the handshake, in the midst of bringing Kenyans together, we can still be able to perhaps check out the government um, uh, uh, as, as, as an effective opposition or not. But what overrides the issue of checks and balances and, and opposition and all that is the fact that Kenyans need to know that uh, 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 the incoming president is a president of all Kenyans. Whether you are in Azimio or Kenya Kwanzaa, this is your president. And the people in Azimio must be made to believe or to, to accept the fact that I may not have voted for him, 
But you know what? He's my president. We need to bring that That's cohesion yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. We need to bring Kenyans together. Mm -hmm. So as even if you were to rise up and say and caution the government as an opposition figure, mm -hmm. it's not done out of out of anger, out of malice, yeah. it, it doesn't seem to be another way of raising. Because campaigns will start tomorrow. Yeah. The next campaign for 2020 starts tomorrow. Starts, starts tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Kenyan standard. Yeah. Yes, because <laughs> what what will happen now with Azimio? They'll call a press conference yeah. and say, "Listen, the struggle continues. <laughs> <laughs> Let us start checking this government." <laughs> and then the campaigns are on. The so are on. <laughs> to pour cold water on that, bring yeah. these guys together, together. Tell them, "Listen, guys, yeah. this thing is gone. We've lost. But you know what? Kenya is one. We're all Kenyans. Yeah. And the president elect." Yeah. A, 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 the cause for a handshake and say, listen, we can work together, this and that. And we have seen that kind of uh, narrative changing a lot yeah. of um, yeah. uh, positions in the country, yeah. bringing down the temperature, causing people not to campaign, and yeah. just opening up uh, the political atmosphere. Yeah, okay. Basically, for everybody to, to, to thrive. Yeah, Swaka has really reminded me of that philosophical line of, you know, if you want to go somewhere uh, alone, go, go you reach very fast. But mm -hmm. if you want to, we go very far, work with you others. know. You 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 work with others, but he also talks about a split, you know, from the results that you know we saw, and that split is not only in the country; it's also within uh, IBC, uh, the corporate body. And uh, I listened to Jabukati earlier on today, and he weighed in, and he said, uh, "You know what, guys? The court has vindicated me. All right, I I did my job, and uh, you know we all did our job." But what stood out for me was he said that the four dissenting commissioners remain part of the body corporate called IEBC. And going forward, I'm just wondering, fine, it was done in the public. So how do we ensure that the centre holds? Swaka says election begins in earnest tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So how, how, do we, how do we advance towards Kenya's true north, knowing that that's the IBC that, you know? I, I, th I think actually uh, it's actually the responsibility of Mr. Chebukati to bring that commission together. I think as a cha chairperson, mm -hmm. he wasn't, uh, he's not a ceremonial chairperson. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there is some of the things that happened is because members fail, if, uh, actually felt that Mr. Jeb Chebukati wasn't really accomplishing his duty, as he should. Mm -hmm. So I think Mr. Chebukati himself has to start mm -hmm. by uh, uh, seeing how he can do some cons consensus building in that commission. Secondly, yes. uh, I think it is not even within Mr. Chebukati's power to say who should leave and who should stay. Mm -hmm. uh, those, those those are members of uh, an independent commission yeah. uh, appointed under the constitution of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And so Chebukati has basically has no say. He can't say they should leave or they shouldn't. Uh, okay. So he's in handcuff as far as the constitution Absolutely. is concerned. Yeah. The constitution of his bearer, so yeah. they are procedure. They are procedure. But Achilles, yeah. 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 they differed on a very fundamental process issue. That, that's right. Yes. Let, let, a let very, very you, weighty process issue. I think, yeah. it, I think yeah. it was expected. Uh, no, not, not that it was expected to be uh, that part public, mm -hmm. but the reason why our um, independent commissions, uh, the constitution provided that they should have an even number of, 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 uh, of members is basically because we needed to have some checks and balances. Mm -hmm. So it is not expected that they should all agree, only that they should work together. What we saw is that it appeared that they, they didn't agree, but they also failed to work together. That, that's basically what we saw. Yeah. Yeah. Are, you, are you following yeah, what you say? I've worked in the corporate world and I'm borrowing some of the best yeah. practices from there. Yeah. If you dif disagree yeah. with the very fundamental aspects on your work, that speaks to not being agreeable to the policies that may be running your organization. Yeah. To the extent that it can become public, it means that it is damaged beyond repair. That's how I want to see it. The prudent thing then to do, because I differed with you, uh, Tom, and you're my executive or my chair, whatever it is, yeah. the right thing for me to do is to resign. And that is, the wow. yeah, that is the language we as Kenyans must start to embrace. That if you are refusing to agree in matters of principle, and the person you're disagreeing with has been vindicated, yeah. yes, yeah. staying still smacks of being dishonest. Uh -huh. From everything else that you were doing, exactly, and that's how I read it. That's how you read it. Yeah. So, so I, yeah. I was wrong. Yeah. 
I besmirch the image of my organization. <coughs> and because it's a going concern, yeah. and I'd like it to continue flawlessly, yeah. I resign. So but you know, that is what we should start doing as Kenyans. We should, yeah. yeah. In fact, you've, you've even answered the question yeah. I wanted to pose because I've had this over and over again. They should resign. It is only in Kenya where people say I'd rather die. Yeah. Than that's that's than right. Yeah. Uh, of course, it's sad that they had such fundamental differences, but they, but it was also at the very last last minute. Yeah. So there was no way that they would have resi resigned. Actually, it, yeah. it was it was it was pretty difficult. Yeah. Uh, and so, I, and I agree with Dr. Ri that um, the most horrible thing, mm -hmm. as we have had that Jaramogi did at some yeah, point. Exactly. Yeah. He's to resign, yeah. as Mata Karua did. Uh, He's to will, resign I will, because... I will, I will because wait in because... Uh, yeah, just, just, just come in there. You, 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 you've, you, you've concluded your point. In this country, <laughs> <laughs> we've had even politicians yeah. hounded in court. Yeah. Nobody will resign. Exactly. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Council. Yeah. We've had scenarios where even governors Yeah. The courts have been forced to step in and they're in office and stop them from uh, accessing their offices mm -hmm. so as they may not interfere yeah. perhaps with uh, with crucial evidence and crucial witnesses yeah. they have never resigned it's taken a court order to stop them from accessing yeah. we have seen governors mm. uh, who have been impeached mm -hmm. going back uh, 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 or rather, uh, trying to contest again yeah. and filing motions, mm -hmm. even up to the Supreme Court, trying to vindicate themselves to go back and be able to contest for same same public offices. Yeah. Instead of saying, "I've resigned," or "I'll wait on the verdict of the exactly. court and all that." So expecting these four <laughs> commissioners to resign <laughs> on a moral ground, yet they came out when they believed. In fact, in fact, when you look at the decision yeah. of the judges today, they were even equally vindicated. What the, what, what, what the judges said, basically, mm -hmm. is that uh, there was a disconnect within, there's a disconnect within the IBC, mm -hmm. which must be fixed. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Let, me, let me, because now we are starting to wind down. Yeah? You, you, you talk about that culture that has been built, mm -hmm. that people cannot resign, no matter what, even if roses grown mm -hmm. snow. But... I did listen to the president-elect, and he felt very, very strongly about leaders using the judicial criminal justice system, you know, for political reasons. And he kept saying it over and over again. It's been, it's been um, the, the campaign of Kenya Kwanzaa has been shaped around that. They've said, listen, we've been targeted for supporting his excellency, the deputy president. Cases have come our way. We have been charged in court. We are innocent Kenyans, mm. but we are being vilified for our political stance. Okay. 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 So as we wrap up, and I want to start with you, Dr. Tari, um, the president-elect says, if I had him mm -hmm. clear, mm -hmm. he said that from tomorrow, he'll be hitting the road running, and he's going to move around the government departments, you know, uh, and, 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 and start work. So in your mind, when you look into the horizon, what are you seeing that frame looking like? <laughs> it will not be business as usual. That is what I'm reading from the tone. And I like the zeal. Work begins tomorrow, I start engaging tomorrow. So some of those changes that he envisages putting in, Mm -hmm. And I do agree, the earlier you start acclimatizing with what it is you're dealing with, even before it's the better. Okay. So it, for me, it sends a very strong signal yeah. that he wants to start serious work. To be business and usual. Yeah, Your last comment on that question, perhaps, also? Yeah, the same, of course. The moment, uh, uh, the moment uh, you've been declared president-elect, a challenge has been uh, uh, lodged at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has upheld your victory. You're basically the president. Yeah. And so the earlier you hit the road, the better for you. And so he's just within his uh, constitutional mandate mm -hmm. to basically st start work, start introducing himself to the structures that are there, to the people already manning the structures, mm -hmm. as he looks forward to. Because nothing stops him now from, stops uh, him from, now. from, from, uh, from taking oath of office. Okay. Mola, your final comments and perhaps what does that frame look like for you? Do we expect to see some old CSS being retained, for example? Um, we have been in an electionary mood for 
as you, some of you have put it, actually for perhaps five years. I think this country has to go back to, to work. Um, the earlier we do that, the better. And I think basically that is what the Deputy President was saying, because we, it can never be politics day in, day out. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, that was very important that we, yeah. the, the process of continuing to build our country has yeah. to go on. <coughs> to go on. Yeah. Two, yeah. on the issue of whether the other C all CS uh, will be there, yeah. we know that some are not going to be retained. Okay. But perhaps we some might be retained. Yeah. But finally, yeah. just uh, on the something that I wanted to conclude, yeah. on the commissioners. Yeah. Uh, the in, process, in, in 10 seconds. In 10 seconds. The process yeah. of removal of commissioners is provided under Article two, uh, 251. Yeah. And I think perhaps some people are going to employ it mm -hmm. to remove some of the commissioners mm -hmm. that they'll be dissatisfied with. Okay, thank you. I want to thank you. And I want, to, I want us to end it on that note of let's mm -hmm. get back to work. Mm -hmm. And we wish the president elect to well. Mm -hmm. uh, the Supreme Court has spoken. And that's the final verdict. Then thank look, you. And looking forward to a new beginning. And looking forward to a new beginning. Exactly. Right. And I want to thank you, yeah. Dr. Thank you. So Dr. Julian Rowe, okay. uh, conversation expert. Uh, Wakili John Swaka, thank That's you for coming through. Mm -hmm. And of course, Alec Mwala, uh, an advocate. I want to thank, thank you, you all for watching. Um, uh, my name is Tom Boyer, and from the capital city of Nairobi, Kenya, good night and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Are we off mic? <laughs>